Today, I'm going to share my £50,000 investment portfolio, which I have over on Trading212 and Vanguard UK. Here's the plan. I'll dive straight into some of my individual holdings. We'll talk about ISA compliance, where I have an official statement from Trading212. And towards the end of the video, I'm also going to make some live investments, so be sure to stick around for that. So let's dive straight into things by kicking off with my Vanguard UK portfolio. Current portfolio value sits at £11,967, of which I've got £11,889 in a Vanguard S&P 500 ETF and I've got £78.97 in cash. Now £40 of that cash was for my most recent quarterly dividend payment which has recently hit my account, which I'm going to withdraw so I can reinvest back into my Trading212 portfolio. Now, I'm currently up 84.52%, which is largely thanks to the strong performance of the S&P 500 over the past few years. And just for reference, I started this portfolio right the way back in 2017. So I've been able to benefit from quite a few years of pretty good gains. The portfolio is up £1,193 year to date, but it is down £126 since the start of the month, which is largely down to the S&P 500, being down 1.15% since the beginning of October. Now, for the most part, because I've transitioned over to Trading212, this part of the portfolio is kind of a little bit of an element of setting and forgetting. So I'll let this part of my portfolio compound over time whilst I now actively invest over on Trading212. But before we dive into my Trading212 portfolio, first I wanted to touch upon ISA compliance because it's been the topic in the headlines that's been going around in the mainstream media around potential issues for those of you guys who currently hold fractional shares. The current view that HMRC is providing is that brokers like Trading212 and others out there that provide fractional shares as an offering to all of their customers are currently non-compliant with the 1998 ISA legislation. It's a pretty long-winded document, but in summary, it simply doesn't say specifically that fractional shares are compliant within ISAs. As a result, headlines like this have hit the media, which say fractional shares in an ISA may result in paying capital gains tax after a HMRC shakeup of the rules. Now, I don't think HMRC have shaken up any of the rules. I just don't think they'd ever confirmed that fractional shares were compliant or not. But recent word on the street is that ISA providers are confident of a potential rule change, but this is yet to be confirmed. Now, I do have an official statement from Trading212, which I wanted to share just a couple of key points from, and it's their view that fractional shares within a stocks and shares ISA account are currently compliant. Nonetheless, they go on to confirm that a fractional share is a genuine legal holding of a share. They are not derivatives, meaning they carry the same inherent risks and benefits of owning a whole share. Fractional shares are held under the stringent guidelines of CAS 6 from the FCA's client asset rules, safely segregated from trading to one two's assets. Whether holding a whole or fractional share, the essence remains unchanged. In our view, every investor holds a proportional interest in the undivided share capital of the issuing entity. So look, the likes of Trading212 and others within this space wholeheartedly believe that fractional shares should be compliant within a stocks and shares ISA. And for what it's worth, I think they should be too. But just to err on the side of caution, I'm just going to round up the fractional shares within my portfolio into whole shares, partially because I kind of find it annoying to have multiple decimal places of shares within my portfolio, but also just more generally speaking, to be compliant with the legislation as it's written currently. So pulling up my Trading212 portfolio, which is currently valued at £34,643, of which I have £714 held in cash, which I'm going to invest some of, if not most of, during today's video. Now, what you can see is that the portfolio over the course of the past month or so has very much been heading in a downward fashion. You can actually see that the portfolio actually peaked in value just earlier on this month on the 12th of October, uh, being up £7,283, the equivalent to just shy of uh, or just over 24%. Whereas as of right now, we're sat at gains of £4,427 for an unrealized profit of 14.65%. Profit is still profit, but pretty much every single individual holding within this portfolio has pretty much shedded off gains just in the past week or so. But with the market trading down, I think now is also another good opportunity to get into the market, buy some of these shares at slightly more discounted prices than they were just a couple of weeks ago in order to lower my average cost basis. So now let me run you guys through my individual holdings. I'll make some live investments and be sure to let me know what you guys are investing into down in the comment section below too. So first up, we have Advanced Micro Devices, 41.2 shares valued at £3,375 
for an unrealized profit of £707, the equivalent to 26.5%. Now, AMD is up 59% so far this year, but it is down about 21% from previous market highs. Analysts do have AMD down as a buy rating with a price target of $136.90, which is a 34.4% upside from current market prices. So today, as things stand, I am going to purchase an additional 0.8 shares worth of AMD in order to round up my portfolio to 42 whole shares. Next up, we have Amazon 34.63 shares valued at £3,592. We are down on this position 265 quid, the equivalent to a downside of 6.89%. Now, Amazon is another one of the gainers so far this year, being up 48%, but it is down 11.9% from previous highs. Analysts are really optimistic on Amazon stock and have it down as a strong buy rating with price targets of $170.30, which is a 33.5% upside from current market prices. Now today, and to get this right, I need to purchase, as I'm reading from my script notes, 0.3604454 of a share to round up my Amazon position, hopefully if my maths is correct to a whole 35 shares within the company. Next up on my list, we have Apple 58.2 shares. This is one of the biggest holdings within my portfolio, valued at £8,237 for the equivalent unrealized profit of 2,523 quid, the equivalent to 44% worth of gains. Amazon stock is up 38.6% year to date, but it is down 11.7% from previous highs. Analysts do have Apple stock down as a buy rating with price targets of $199.06 per share, which is a 14.6% upside from current market prices. Now again, I am going to round up this fraction of a share into a whole share by today purchasing 0.7159014 of a share for £101.35. Next up on my list, we have Meta Platforms, 18.95 shares valued at £4,871. Another position which has just massively gained, if I'm honest, over the past 12 months or so, uh, being up 26.28%, the equivalent for a gain of 1,014 quid. Now, Meta Platforms, as I kind of touched upon, are one of the top performing stocks within the S&P 500 so far this year, and have actually been one of the great recovery players of the past 12 months, with the stock actually now being up year to date 154%. Now, despite such a huge gain, you'd think that analysts potentially wouldn't be as interested in any potential further upside in Meta platform stock but the reality is they still have it down as a strong buy rating with analyst price targets of 362 dollars per share which is a 14.4 percent upside from current market prices now i'm very much going to do the same by rounding up my position in meta platforms and today we are going to grab ourselves 0.0487639 of a share which is just 12 pounds and 56 pence to round us up to hopefully 19 whole shares within the business. Next up, we have 109 shares in Palantir Technologies, currently valued at 1,443 pounds, currently down 360 odd quid on the position, the equivalent to about 20%. Palantir Technologies has actually been a good performer so far this year, being up 155% year to date. However, it has been quite volatile over the past few months, as probably to be expected with this nature of a business. But overall, we are certainly still heading in the right direction. Right now, analysts have the stock rating as a hold with analyst price targets of $16.31 per share, which is actually about a 12% downside from current market prices. Analysts do kind of seem to be hiking the price targets of Palantir Technology stock every couple of months or so, but for now, I'm just gonna simply hold the position as it stands today. Next up on my list, we have 26.7 shares in Tesla valued at £4,641. We're up just under £1,000 on this position with the equivalent rate of return of 26.87%. Now, Tesla stock is up 100% year to date, but it is down about 12% just this month after recent earnings didn't exactly please investors, seeing a massive drop off in Tesla's profits. And because of that, my position in Tesla has also taken quite the beating too. Nonetheless, Tesla stock is still down as a buy rating with analyst price targets of $228.52, which is up 5.7% from current market prices. Actually, since the earnings reports have come out, analysts seem to have downgraded Tesla's stock price by about $30 or so, 
since this time last month. But nonetheless, I am going to round up my position uh, again today with the stock trading ever so down slightly. So we're going to buy a 0.229104 of a share for £39.79. And can I just say how much more satisfying that now looks with having fully rounded up whole shares within every position within this investment portfolio. But nonetheless, let's dive into the final couple of holdings. So we've got Unity Software, VAD at 150 quid. We're down 500 odd pound on this position, the equivalent to about 80%. Now I've got no intention to buy or sell any of these shares as it currently stands, but I'll hold on to the position for now, just as a bit of a reminder that sometimes investing can go wrong. But despite this, let's still look at the rating. So analysts do still have Unity Software down as a buy rating with a forecast of $43.07 which is actually 63.3% upside from current market prices, which I'm going to need all of and a hell of a lot more to get this position back to break even. Then very finally, we have 127 shares of the Vanguard VUSA S&P 500 ETF valued at £8,342. We are up £416.99 on this position the equivalent to 5.26%. Now I am going to increase my exposure to the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF and we are going to pick up an additional five whole units for £328.44. Now if you guys do now to get to this point within my investing journey, I've spent the last 10 years studying and learning all about the topic. Now I've managed to summarize some of the key learnings over that period of time, which I've put together in a video here. So be sure to check out that video next. But before you go, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Drop a like on the video, guys. That being said, I'll see you over in the next one.